Okay, for this first lesson we're going to be taking a look at solving exponential equations. They're really going to come in two forms. We're going to take a look at when the variable is in the exponent spot, but we're going to compare that to a technique where we're still looking at exponents, but we're going to be solving for a variable that is in the denominator. You'll see some further solving techniques, but this is a good in introduction to looking for patterns. So let's get started with the first one. Uh, so we're going to start really simple here uh, and look at our first example. And it's just to illustrate a point. If you have like bases in an equation such as 2 to the x equals 2 to the 12th, then it becomes really easy to look for an additional pattern here. The only way for 2 to something power to equal 2 to the 12th is this that if, as if that exponent is 12. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. It seems overly simplified, but let's take a look at it when we get to this equation. We don't have like bases, but we want to see or ask the question hey, can we look for like bases? So this is um, down to 4. We could always look at breaking this down, but you might want to look at your power chart here and see that 64 can be written as 4 cubed. And 4 cubed is 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So when I bring this guy down, in one simple step, we've gotten to a point where we can ask ourselves the same question, 4 to, to a power equaling 4 to the cubed, that power in the initial side must be 3. So we can equate the exponents now when the bases are the same. That's the only way that that's possible. Okay. Uh, so we're going to keep building on that theme and looking for patterns in our numbers and try to get uh, a little more complicated. Here, uh, 32, if you check in your table, cannot be broken down uh, into base 8. So we're going to take both of these down. You should see that 8 stands out on your table as being 2 cubed. So I'm going to write 2 cubed there and I'm going to write it in parentheses and, and that is still raised to the x power. 32, you want to look for the, the 2 column. It can be written as a base of 2. 32 is 2 to the 5th. So now I'm going to apply properties of exponents. And on this left side, the 3 and the x, by properties of exponents, the power property means we multiply them. And I can say, hey, that's th 2 to the 3x. And I'm going to bring down 2 to the 5x. So we put ourselves in that same situation now where we're looking at same base. And I'm going to take the uh, th 3 to the 3 to the, I'm sorry, 2 to the 3x and the 2 to the 5th, and we can just equate their exponents. So this must be true if 3x is equal to 5. I will now simply solve by dividing both sides by 3, and x is 5 thirds. If we go back up to the original problem, we see that you know 8 to the first power is 8. And 8 squared is 64. So it should make sense that the power that 8 raised to, since 32 is between 8 and 64, would be somewhere between 1 and 2, and indeed it is uh, 1 and 2 thirds. All right, let's take a look at another problem. Here we see that there's a fraction. Okay, And fractions, we just want to think about that as uh, kind of getting everything to the same base, which means this guy needs to come up. Okay, So I might just ask the question, how did it get down there in the first place? Things can be moved to the denominator if they have a negative exponent. So if I want to bring that back up, I'm simply going to write it as the 27, and I'm going to put it to the first power. Okay. So now we get 9 to the x and 27 uh, to the negative 1. You might want to look at your power table. I'm going to slide up. Oops, that's my, I don't have my power table yet. Uh, and... So we're going to try to get these in the same basis. So 9 looks like the perfect square of 3. So I'm going to write that as 3 squared. And 
I encourage you to use parentheses here and just leave the X up there in the first step. And 27 oh, can also be written as base 3, but it's 3 cubed. Again, I'm going to add parentheses here and put the negative 1. Okay, so now just apply our properties of exponents, specifically the power property. So I get 3 to the 2x, multiply them, and multiply the exponents over here, and I get 3 to the negative 3. That just means that 1 over 27 can be written as 3 to the negative 3. So now that we have our like bases, we can equate the exponents. The only way for this to be true is that the 2x in one exponent equals a negative 3 in the other, and thus x is equal to negative 3 halves. Again, we can look at this number going to 27, and the only way for 9 to get bigger is that the power has to be bigger than 1. 9 squared would give us 81, so we know it's between uh, 8 at 1 and 2 for the exponent, and indeed uh, the 3 halves gets it there. Then the negative simply just flips it. So to look at a couple of additional examples, I'm just going to make sure that I recommend that you look at the Discovering Advanced Algebra book, page 260 in section 5.2. Example A has parts A through C, gives you three more examples. We're going to go on to undoing simple equations at this time. Okay, and we are going to take a look at a couple of ways to solve this problem. Okay? The first way is we're just going to say, hey, to get this uh, x by itself, I need to basically get rid of or undo the sixth power. So what I'm going to introduce to you is how to undo this power okay? is to raise it to another power such that their product is... 1. So I'm going to raise it to the 1 6th power because 6 times the reciprocal is 1. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other. So I put a 1 6th on the other side. Here, this right here is going to equate to 1, and that's what we wanted it to do. So we get x to the first. Now a 1 is not required, but for the purpose of these notes I want you to be able to see it, so make sure you document that in your notes. And then we just get a 64th to the 1 6th. Okay? Uh, now, you can plug this right into a calculator, no big deal. So x is equal to, and this is how you plug it into a calculator, 64, and for these ex exponents you're going to want to press the caret key, and then please get in the habit of uh, adding uh, rational exponents in parentheses so that you make sure that the whole fraction is being uh, the exponent raised upon the base. Okay, And what you're going to get, lo and behold, is a nice clean number 2. Now, this might make you realize that you should have seen a pattern. Okay, So let's take a look quickly at a power table. This one's a little different than the one you had. Okay, But we're looking for uh, sixths. Okay? Uh, and so if you look at the sixth column, you see 64 okay, right here. Okay, So that's the sixth power. And literally, we just need to come back over. And there's our answer. Okay, uh, So that, that can be useful for you. So I'm just going to slide this out of the way because there's actually oh, another way we could take a look at it. Okay. And so we'll just quickly do that. And we could take this problem and if we recognize that this 64 is a base we could rewrite it as x to the sixth equals 2 to the sixth the only way for that to be true is for x to be equal to 2 so if you can simplify a side because you recognize a pattern of the, the power in this case a sixth uh, then you can pull that off Alright, our last example for undoing is going to involve some steps. This one won't come out so perfectly, so we'll use a calculator uh, to help us out a little bit. Okay, uh, and we'll see how that uh, treats us. So, this example is a little different because it's going to redirect us to realize that before we can apply our undoing technique to this uh, fourth power, we need to isolate it. So, let's divide both sides by three. Okay, and Ah, shucks. I didn't give you the right problem. 
Let me start again. I meant to give you 240. So when we both divide both sides by 3, uh, that's when I get my, my 80. Sorry about that. So 3x to the 4th. 3x to the 4th is equal to 80. Okay. I wanted to get to this 80. Uh, and I could check on my power chart really quick. Okay. And I'm looking for the 4th column. Uh, or for fourths. So if I cruise down here, I don't see 80, but I do see 81. So I do know that my answer is going to be about 3. In fact, just a little shorter than 3. Okay, so keep that in, in mind as we move forward here. So how do we undo this? We're going to take the x to the fourth, and in parentheses here, I'm going to raise it to the 1 fourth power. Okay, I want to get, I want to get rid of that guy. One fourth. Okay? And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay? Uh, this is not going to be a an exact answer. So we could plug this into a calculator and get 80 carat 1 slash 4. You could also put 2.25 in there. All right, it's correct. That's a 4. And what I'm going to get is do this again. Parentheses one slash. Got to draw my fours carefully. There we go. And, and what you're going to get out of your calculator there is going to be an approximation, and you're going to get two point nine nine one. So just less than three. Let's talk for a minute, just one last second, to make some parallels here. Uh, that we could take this answer and write it exactly. We don't like 80 to the 1 fourth power. All right? We don't like fractions. We don't like negatives. So we could go to um, radical form. Okay? Uh, we talked about this the other day in class. This is a little outside of this lesson. It's actually in 5.3, but that's okay. We learned that the denominator goes as the index of the radical, and we can simply put the 80 in here. This 1, the first power, okay, the first stays with the number, okay, and the denominator becomes the index. So it is possible to say that our answer is just the fourth root of 80 as your answer. Then you could do that it's approximately 2.991. Keep in mind that the fourth root of 80 is exact. 2.991, no matter how many decimals we write, is uh, just an approximation. So we've taken a look at uh, solving a to the x equations as well as x to the a functions. So uh, take a look at the book examples a little further before you uh, move on into looking at your assignments in class.